Hey guys, I'm John, and in this video I'm going to give you my first impressions of how Ace, I think, <laughs> this is. Hey guys, welcome to another video, and this time I'm going to give you my first impressions of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. So, I've managed to get this game, and I absolutely love the Zelda series. Zelda's just one of my favourite franchises that Nintendo have ever done. I think it's just an incredible series, and... Then releasing Skyward Sword for the 35th anniversary of Zelda, which seems like a bit of a meagre offering really if you just released one game. Well, last year Mario got a whole lot for his 35th anniversary, but who knows? Maybe they'll see some more soon. But for now we get Skyward Sword HD. So this is what we get. Now, Skyward Sword is a game that released 10 years ago for the 25th anniversary of Zelda. So there we've got um, Skyward Sword. So Skyward Sword was an origin story. Um, that showed the very first sort of Zelda and Link and the evil that bestowed upon the kingdom of Hyrule. And I did have it for the Wii. It is still sitting on the shelf over there. Um, and when it released on the Wii, I really liked the game. I thought the story was really good. Um, it was nice to sort of have a little bit of a twist on things and a lot of new mechanics. Um, so like with flying the loft wings, which are like the bird things here at the top you can see um, and it was it was just had some really cool ideas in it but because it was on the Wii obviously it had a lot of motion controls and Skyward Sword was one of the ones that used the Motion Plus which was enhanced sort of control motion whatever Wii stuff and it bugged the hell out of me and I, and I didn't enjoy Skyward Sword nowhere near as much as I believe I would have done if it wasn't for the frustrating controls, um, I had a lot of sort of issues with it, uh, and I it took me so long to sort of keep going through it. I don't know if you hear the motorbike going past. Um, and I really struggled with it. Um, so when they said they bring it out on the Switch, I was like, oh, that's amazing! It's going to be so much better. And I was just like hoping for just sort of be able to play it on a pad and enjoy it to the max, um, similar to what they did with like um, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess on the Wii U, they updated them and they looked amazing, they had enhancements, and I was like, they're going to do that with Scarred Sword, it's going to be so good. And they sort of have, so they played it, so you can play it with pad or with Joy-Cons, so similar to how it was on the Wii, and I've tried it with both, just to, you know, you've got to give it a go, see if they've improved it at all. And so I'm going to go sort of give you my thoughts on that. And then I'm also just going to go through all the bits I had with it when I bought it. Because I bought it from Game UK and it come with a couple of bits, which was pretty cool. But I have played it, like I say, with the pad. So I played it with the Pro Pad. And that's how I started playing it. So I thought, you know what, just for ease, just whack it on TV. And I played it with the Pro Pad. So I played it with the Pro Pad and... The way they've done it is really, really, really weird. So, it's a bit like how skate worked. How everything's done on your sort of your right stick. So, all your sword controls now are on your right stick. So, wherever you angle the right stick, that's where your sword slashes. Which, do you know what? It's pretty cool. Okay? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm down with that. that. That's quite a cool feature. Um, but then, by putting your right stick... As your sword controls, it sort of negates the use of a camera because obviously most most games, you know what I mean. Your camera works with your right stick, and I was a bit like, how's that work? So you have to press the L button. You have to depress the L button. So literally, most of the time I'm running around, I'm pressing L, I'm running around because that then allows the right stick to use the camera. And it's so weird, man. So weird. I'm like, most of the time I'm running around slashing at things because I'm like pressing the right stick for loop that way and like attacking everything with the sword and I'm like this is weird man um, but after playing it for a, a few hours now I do start getting into it and just using the, the left sort of bumper um, to sort of use your camera there's still times where I'll, I'll go for loop somewhere and attack somebody you know especially when you're talking to like some of the NPCs around the world and I'm like dude where's this and I'm like, you know Luckily, you can't hurt them, which is good. Um, so I've used that, and it's really cool. Um, 
Flying the loft wing is really fun um, with the pad because you're using like the left stick to guide it round and um, I really sort of enjoyed the time flying the loft wings around. And then I have played it with the Joy-Cons, so I played it with the Joy-Cons as well. And, oh man, it's so hard with the Joy-Cons, I just can't get my head around it. So it still works the same as like, you press the L on here to look around, but obviously all your sword slashes has to do with swinging the hell out of this. I did throw it at one point, so after that I did put the wrist supports on because, you know, don't want to break my Joy-Cons, man. Especially my orange one, I love it. Um, and then, like, it's just still, man, it still frustrates me. And, like, flying a loft wing, oh, flying a loft wing is just terrible. So you have to hold your pad and, like, steer it. And then, like, when you're flying, you've got to flap. And, like, doing certain moves, you're like this and like this. I feel like I've been, like, an air steward dude, do you know what I mean? I'm like, this, go that way. So using the Joy-Cons is just a no for me. I'm like, yeah, stick to the pad. Prefer you're playing with the pad anyway. Um, I, I could just get a, a lot more immersion personally from it. Um, so that's sort of the control side of it. I, I, me personally, I prefer the pad. Do you know what? Right, if if you enjoy using the motion controls, then do you know what? they do actually work quite well. They're they're quite sort of in, intuitive into what you're doing. Um, I still struggled with it, like in in the training area. So that was where I sort of tried the controls for each, and then I did run around and like say fly the loft wing with both and. So to try a little bit of what I could use them for and how they varied. Now, I do personally prefer the pad, um, but they do, the motion controls, it's still a fun feature. And it's nice that Nintendo are still sort of honouring what was before. This is like two console generations prior. And they're still sort of like, you know, this is what made this game. This is what it was. So we're still going to include it, which is nice that they do that and you've got that option. I just wish that, your sword wasn't attached solely to the right stick. Maybe if you pull your left trigger to target and then um, and then you can use your sword, maybe that would have been a better feature and then you could just use the right stick for the camera because it's just, it's just so weird. It's so alien to have to keep pressing a button to look around rather than just looking around. So maybe that was something that they could have done rather than just on your sword. You could have to trigger and then you could attack. Um... Maybe that would have been better. Um, on sort of the update on like the HD as it is, because the Wii wasn't an HD console, so the Switch has now had the HD on it. The graphically it is really good. I'm really impressed with it graphically. Uh, everything's really, really nice to look at. The, the visuals have been really fine-tuned, because they did look a bit sort of rough and a bit grainy and blurry on the Wii, which you yeah, accept because the Wii was like that. It was a less powerful but fun console. Um... Whereas the Switch really sort of pushes what it could have been. And graphically, it really does look good. Uh, the visuals and like the vistas, especially in like Skyloft, uh, are amazing. And, and like the draw distance is quite good on it as well. So you can actually see quite a lot in the distance. So you can see where you're heading. Um, and then down on the on the surface world, so I've only sort of explored Farron Woods at the minute. And it, that, that looks amazing. It, it does look incredible. Like the colours on it and everything is so bright and so visually pleasing. And they've done a really good sort of scrubber on the HD visuals on it. On it. Um, so I was really impressed with it overall. Um, like Even like the characters have all got nice clean cut lines and everything. And, and it's just so sort of, it's just beautiful to look at to be fair. Which most Zelda games are. It's one of the things they've always got really, really good graphics. Especially for sort of when they release. Um, but now we're having a HD master, this game looks how I imagine it was intended to look. It looks as good as it will ever look and plays even better now you've got the option to switch between either a pad or a Joy-Con. So it's really sort of, you know, it's user-friendly and very sort of inviting for new players as well as returning players. Um, so if you, you know, like I say, I played it on the Wii um, and the motion controls did my head in, especially when you get to the point where you have this beetle thing that you fire and you've got to get the Wii remote and you're like this and all that. And then I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna, and then like it goes off, and I was like, oh, like this. But thankfully, I can play it on a pad now, and it's gonna be so much easier. Um, my one thing I will say about using the Joy Cons is I had to keep recalibrating it. I don't know why, but every time I'm sort of so I'm doing stuff with it, and I'm there, and then when I'm playing, then my my arms sort of get lazy and just drop on my lap, and I'm playing like that. 
And then when I go to raise the sword up, to get the sort of the skyward strike ready, so you sort of imbue it with the power of the, the sort of goddess. You have to hold the sword directly up, so on the pad, you just literally hold the right stick up and he does it. Obviously, with the Joy Cons, you've got to hold it up like this. And, like, if I've been resting my arms down and I go for hold the Joy Con up, yeah, Link just sort of half heartedly lifts it. He's like, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, okay, pause the game, aim at the screen, recalibrate. And then do it. And I had to do that every few minutes, which I found really frustrating. Um, and obviously, the Wii had a sensor bar, so it could pick up everything regardless, whereas the Switch doesn't. So I found myself recalibrating it every sort of few minutes whenever I needed to do something, especially when it was coming to like areas where I was in combat. I was like, oh, here we go. Why is he not fighting? I'm swinging like a crazy person. And Link's just like, yeah, yeah I'm just going to get beat up. Yeah. So then I like pause the game, recalibrate, oh, and then he was back in it. And it sort of took me out of the emotion a little bit because I was forever like, oh, recalibrate, let's go. Oh, recalibrate, oh, let's go. Um, so for me, that 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 was a downside, another downside um, to using the motion controls because I, I got fed up of it um, doing that. And that, that was at the point where I was like, oh, do you know what? Where's my pro pad? So I put the pad back up, put it in, no problems. Happy days. Um... So that's how I feel about sort of motion controls versus that. Graphics were really good. The sound tracks amazing on it anyway, which they always are. Um, I do wish one day that we wouldn't get a silent protagonist in a Zelda game. I really wish to give Link a voice. Everybody else seems to get voices. Like Zelda had a, bre a voice in Breath of the Wild, and so did all like um, the Guardians, uh, the Champions rather. Guardians the champions um, they all had voices and it just nice at some point to let Link have a voice because you seem sort of talking to people but you don't hear what he already says maybe one day maybe in the Breath of the Wild sequel we'll get that so yeah do you know what I'm going to battle through it I love Zelda so I'll still battle through it and it's been a while since I've sort of put Skyward Sword on because um, I just got frustrated with the controls on the wing it was one of the ones where you're done you're done but being able to use a pad, do you know what? I'm really happy with that. Um, I think it's really good. I think it's good that they've done it. I mean, obviously, the, it, it, if they didn't, they sort of going to half the market because the people that got a Switch Lite wouldn't be able to play it if it was motion controls only. And Nintendo aren't going to have that. So they're going to just plug it for everybody. So that's what it's going to do. And that's why it's got both options. And yeah, like I say, graphically, it is a really good upgrade. And the controls, it controls really well. The controls are very responsive. Um, also on the pad, um, mainly due to the calibration on the Joy Cons. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I'm quite impressed with it so far. Um, and, and the story in Skyward Sword is excellent as well. It's very underrated um, for me. Um, it's not it's a game that I don't think gets talked about enough in the Zelda community. I, I, I really enjoyed how they um, established an origin story for the, the Land of Hyrule. So yeah, I'm really impressed with it. So guys, that was a look at my first thoughts. And now I'm just going to show you guys what I had with my sort of edition. So you get the game as it is uh, in a normal Switch case. which has got the original artwork on it, which is awesome. Then on the back, we get just a few little screenshots, brief description. And it also tells you that you can have also motion and button controls, which is cool. Inside we get obviously the cartridge and just some nice artwork of uh, Link and the Triforce, which again is pretty damn sweet. And then I also got a steel boot with it. Now, never get this. Why why give you a game case and a steel book? Game has done that a few times, but it's just one of them things. But steel book, the artwork on this is incredible. I really, 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 really like it. Um, it is very cool. Um, it's very very displayable um, because it is very nice. On the back, we just get a picture with the Master Sword and the Hylian Crest, which is also pretty cool. And if I can open it, he says. And then inside, we also get a really cool image inside there as well. There we go. It follows the Triforce. So overall, it's a very nice steel boot. To be honest with you, Nintendo Switch doesn't get many steelbooks. I have one other, which is the Flashback Limited Edition. I got that, but for some reason, you don't really see many steelbooks. And I love a steelbook. I really do. Um, 
And I also got this little thing, so I'll get a little pouch with Zelda Skyward Sword on it. Just a really cool little pouch. And inside here, I've got a keyring with the Triforce on it. There we go. Which is pretty cool. I really like that. It's very, very cool. And I also got a t-shirt. Not that I'm going to go sell the t-shirt, but I've got a t-shirt, man. How is is that? So I get a t-shirt that says Zelda Skyward Sword HD on it. It also has a little Nintendo Switch symbol on the sleeve. And on the back, if I can hold it up, has the same image that's inside the steelbook. Which is really cool. So there you go, guys. That's my first thoughts on Skyward Sword HD. I am going to blast through it. Once I've got through it and finished it, I'll give you guys my full review. If you did enjoy this video, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel for more Ace content. It doesn't take a second, just hit that like button. It does me proud. If you want any updates, follow me on Instagram. With that, guys, I'll catch you later.